You know, the fact that we're talking about transmedia and terms like these means that the media industry is kind of progressing. You know, in the West, they've been using these terms and actually implementing them since decades. I mean, if you see what's happening with Marvel, uh, with Disney, they've really, uh, you know, taken their IP and done a lot of uh, exploitation of their IP across mediums and formats. You know, I'd like to start with uh, just, uh, you know, clarifying something. The difference between cross-media and transmedia. Uh, generally, uh, when we use the word cross-media, it's largely telling the same story across different mediums and formats. So if you look at Harry Potter, the same story in the book and the same story goes to film. Uh, when you look at transmedia, it's technically supposed to be the same world and universe, but we tell different stories on different formats, but the experience for the consumer is the same. So if you look at, for example, Matrix the movie, uh, you know, Animatrix the series and Matrix the game, they are very different narratives, but the experience of the consumer is the same. I think in India, we are kind of still somewhere between cross-media and transmedia. And the topic for today is, uh, you know, the blurring lines between books and films. So we'll start with, you know, the low-hanging fruit. I'll start with, you know, Abhishek. I mean, your film Kai uh, you know, was one of the most kind of talked about films at that time, that year, coming from book. How was your experience then, and how have you seen kind of the market move now when it comes to adaptations? Because, you know, uh, there's been a lot of chatter about books going to screen. I mean, I've been running a company in that space since the last five years. But obviously, it's not that easy. People are underestimate the task of taking a story from print to screen. So would love to know your experience and thoughts. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, when I did the uh, Kai Poche, it came out in 2013. Uh, but the work on it started uh, right after I finished Rock On, that is 2009, 2008, 2009. Uh, you know, taking Chetan's book, the Three Mistakes of My Life, I mean, when I read it, it was a very a simply written book. It had some great characters and uh, some uh, incredible events uh, we've woven into the narrative, you know, like the earthquake and the, uh, the riots and there was a very important India-Australia test match. And these events and these characters were just dynamite together. And the thing with the book was that it was very simplistically written, so it left room for me as a filmmaker to uh, cra bring some craft into it and to make it a cinema-going experience. You know, what I have learned over the past years and my experience in this business is that people are, at the end of the day, interested in story. You know, they want to know characters that they can relate with and or they can understand and say, yeah, that could be me or that could be my friend or my sister or my brother. And then they find that hook you know, that they get locked onto and they get drawn into a film. Now, whether these films are just dramas or whether they are, uh, you know, massive VFX-laden uh, productions, but we still have to have story. You just can't be displaying VFX without having those crucial human elements, you know. And I mean, your question was how... How has it changed since then? Plus how know, challenging was the, you know, the process? It was know? very tough because I, I did not, I, I personally do not come from any, uh, I didn't go to any film school and I didn't study film writing or anything. So I had to figure out stuff myself as I went along. And I like to explore the subject matter from all angles and then finally decide on what would be the right approach to take to tell this story. You know, and when you read a book, uh, authors, you know, they have a different structure when they tell you a story and in, in a book. And uh, while you're weaving a screenplay, it has a different structure altogether, like you need an act one, act two, act three, irrespective of how you screenplay it, linear or non-linear. But you need to have structure, and they're both structurally very different. So it took me a while to pick up from the book and put it into a screenplay. Uh, I mean, you know, every book will come with its own challenges, and this was my experience when I did Kai Poche. But to your, the more important part, I think, is where have we come since 2013, yeah. when I did that, to now. I don't think we've really moved much. You know, we still have our, we work in the same system, and we work in the same uh, 
approach and uh, uh, I think what we are lacking today is uh, vision, you know. We have to first believe that uh, India is here for world domination. You know, every other industry in this country and every other, uh, uh, yeah, every other industry in this country is aspiring for that. You know, whether, uh, in, whether it's in medicine or whether it's in uh, infrastructure or various other things. But in our industry, we still talk about Bollywood and our people and uh, we try to uh, move the goalpost to a convenient spot that we can score it at. You know, I think it's important to really see the potential of our stories and the kind of cultural richness that we carry. In fact, even the West did not have its own cultural heritage, but they have created one in their, in their Marvel films. You know, and I think a lot of it has been inspired from our stories. And look at what they have built and the world is consuming it. We just simply do not believe that we can do it. And hence, we are not uh, doing justice to our potential, you know. And uh, I think we have some great stories. And it's all in our literature. It's all in our books. But the, I think the game is changing. Such big studios have come in. Uh, and uh, I think the big decision makers out there should initiate this change, you know, they should break the earlier mold and uh, redesign how our business is structured, you know, so that more money can be pumped into the vision as opposed to just setting up a proposal that can be marketed in a very current uh, uh, India box office kind of way. You know, if we start looking at world domination for our, our, our content and our stories, we need to change the scenario a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, talking about money and vision, and I think, Amish, uh, you know, your, your books have impacted a full generation. And, you know, I'm sure you keep getting all kinds of proposals and people coming to you and talking about how they can take your work to screen. What do you think has been the challenge that, you know, the industry here has been facing, you know, with such epic, uh, you know, stories? Is it the vision? Is it the money? Is it the, the skill? Like, how's been your experience over the years talking about it? And, you know, please share some of your thoughts. Um, look, the, uh, the way I see it, I would completely second what Abhishek uh, said, that the opportunity is there for the taking uh, uh, for India. Uh, uh, there, are, there are some, and on that I agree with him, who want to be a big fish in a small pond, uh, which used to be the approach earlier. But now we need to realize India itself has become a very big pond. Right. We're the fifth largest economy on earth. Very soon we'll be the third largest economy. Right. So just India as a country provides that base market on which we can, uh, in effect, influence the world. Um, when you write a book with a big scale, what are the issues in a country like India as compared to, say, a Hollywood studio producing it? One is uh, the budget, which used to be a problem till the recent past. Um, uh, the, uh, the special effects, the sets that are needed, there's a minimum amount of budget that's needed, which India couldn't put up earlier. Uh, the change that's happening now is India itself has become a much bigger market. So we can put up a bigger budget and I think artificial intelligence uh, is going to drastically, uh, let's see how it plays out over time. Uh, Google Gemini clearly had some, some issues. Uh, but there's no doubt that over time AI will perhaps reduce production costs of uh, VFX, which makes many such stories much more doable. So that's one part of it. Uh, the second part is, uh, I think, the way our, uh, particularly the Indian film industry in, in Mumbai is structured as compared to the South Indian film industry, where the story is not at the heart of it. Uh, it didn't used to be this way. 50s, 60s, 70s, usually the story was the heart of, of uh, the movie. Um, and I think that is something that is perhaps a cultural change that needs to happen. 
uh, a movie should not be a vehicle. It should be essentially about the story. And if the story in the South Indian film industry is actually showing us that, if the story works, uh, it doesn't matter if you have a star or not. And it, look at Kantara, look at so many movies which, which have done fantastic business even up in North India. So that's perhaps a cultural change. And uh, third, we really should look at the world as a market. Uh, the world is interested in India. Uh, and we should confidently put our stories uh, uh, out there. Uh, and the kind of stories that the West is enjoying now, uh, you know, Marvel, the Marvel comics are in many ways actually based on Greek mythology, uh, Scandinavian mythology, Viking mythology, uh, which is very similar to ours, except we are a living culture. Yeah. You know? uh, Greek, Viking uh, cultures are museum pieces because those cultures are not living cultures anymore. Uh, so that's the opportunity that we have. There's an interest in such kind of stories. And we are a living culture which can uh, present this. So the world is our oyster, the opportunity is fantastic. Uh, we need to just jump, jump at it. Yeah, and also with streaming, the, the geographical challenges have gone. Challenges are gone. Dubbing One of the things you find in the West, for example, uh, is that language is also not a barrier. Yeah. Uh, people are willing to, uh, to see programs in the native language with subtitles. Yeah, I mean, Korean content has exactly. shown us that. Uh, so, so even that as a barrier uh, is kind of breaking down. So really, uh, you know, our capacities and capabilities are improving. Barriers in uh, the rest of the world are coming down. Uh, the only thing uh, holding us back is uh, the lack of our own conviction and just jumping at it and going for it. Right. In fact, uh, you know, if you look, uh, think of transmedia, Bahubali is a great example of transmedia, wherein the film came first and then a book came later, which was a different story. And it was kind of written just for, you know, publishing. Uh, you know, this brings me to Saurabh, who, you know, is a filmmaker, but is also an investor, has access to a lot of money, is constantly investing, producing. Saurabh, you know, I mean, is capital an issue when it comes to these kind of epic uh, like adaptations and also do people is the industry investing enough in helping books or other source material go to screen because I think development has always been a challenge in our industry everybody wants a ready-made script everybody wants something that's attached packaging and I think writing is always neglected and like from your perspective like you know coming from investment and money what's your view on what's happening so I guess uh, I can talk about two worlds and because I'm one of the oldies being there for the last 25 years, there used to be a time when you used to go to NAS building and you know, used to go with the project, but you never went with the concept. You, you always went ki, sir, ye project hai, Saif Ali Khan hero hai, itni 35 crore ke investment hai. Aray, yaar, ye bahut zyada hai, isko tease kar de. Content, the story was never questioned, they were, it was never discussed. From that world to now, uh, the problem is, the there are two divisions in our business. One is the commerce caste and the other is the creative caste. The commerce caste, not many read. So like Amish, if he goes back in time and he doesn't make a book and it, it's not a success, for him making that script into a film will be like a next to an impossible task. So what he is doing or what, uh, you know, you've done with Trial by Fire, these are, these are stories which you uh, read and you can see the characters, you can see the world. So the creative side is reading that. And I think whatever Abhishek has done in terms of Kai Poche, hats off, I, I don't think 80% of the people, and I'm saying in a very conservative number, 80% of the people would have not got it. Are yaar, kya naam hai Kai Poche? Ye UP mein samajh mein nahi aayega, ye Punjab mein samajh mein nahi aayega, kaun hero le liya aapne? Iski jage ye le lo. So that's where that that whole business, uh, you know, struggles. Uh, fortunately, if I compare it to the global market, uh, in, uh, in the global uh, market, the commerce prevails. The studios cut down things. Look at what has happened with Madam Web, so much cutting and everything. Here are the creative rules. So once you start setting up a precedence, I think there is a way to go about it. The problem is people in the creative side also, and I'm not talking about filmmakers, I'm talking about people 
who are in the creative side, they'll have to start reading. They'll have to start understanding that, you know, this can work and this is the vision that needs to work upon. Everybody agrees language is a barrier, but you try to make a film in Malayalam and try to release it in Delhi, it's still a problem. So that's the thing. Yeah, but you want people to read. That's ridiculous. This is Bombay. It's a film industry. Nobody reads. Uh, so what happens is that you can read maybe one script, two script, but when you have 20 scripts a day, you start reading between the lines. And there's a prevalent structure of uh, narration. Yeah, narration they do. And uh, trust me on it, narration mein char galiyan dal do, any narration will sound nice. So, you know, people have to go out of these animated words and see what they are reading. And when I, when I read his stuff or uh, Three Mistakes of Our Life and no, you can see the characters, you can see the world. So that vision needs to come and not many have that vision. Yeah, that's true. I mean, fortunately, people have read Amish's books. But you know, when we sometimes in the early days used to pitch books for screen, a few producers said, it's a narration they do. And I was like, <laughs> are you serious? Fortunately, we have audio books now. So I think that helps. No, but uh, just give an example, Trial by Fire. I, uh -huh. I've been, I was in Ophar a day before the tragedy happened. And had that script come to me as a filmmaker, I would have not done the film. Mm. Till I saw what the filmmaker has done. Because it's so, you know, it's so uh, dark in my heart that it's difficult for me to go back and revisit it. But when you see somebody else's work, you, you know, you learn from it. And same with Kai Poche. When you saw it, you say, ye perspective so chai nahi tha. Yeah. So that's a big learning and I think it's thanks to the books. Absolutely. So, while we're still talking about the blurred lines between films and books, Siddharth has actually made his millions and billions by already crossing the lines, connecting the lines and taking mythology and a lot of this public domain material, that's still called source material and very successfully taken it to screen, right? And I think it's a very uh, smart way of kind of taking audiences to, it's almost like transmedia wherein it's a different same world, but the stories are told in a different way for the different format. I mean, the way the stories were written thousands of years ago and the way they've been told on screen, it's different. And, you know, uh, doing it successfully is, is actually, you know, I'm sure it wasn't as easy as it seems from the outside. So I'd love to know your experiences in how have you managed to do that and like, is there a certain process with which you pick the material and then you kind of develop it for screen? Lines are blurred for us, but for you, they're very clear. Uh, you know, I feel that, uh, you know, at the core of it, when you wake up and you decide that, you know, you want to tell the Mahabharat story, you know, it's not something that you can just wake up in one morning and go out and tell it. So it took me more than five years to uh, come to a point as to how do we tell it. His book, which is global, you know, has his own perspective to it, his own adaptation, his own thought on how he feels that story should be told. Similarly, when you pick up such great epics, you have to respect them with the way they were written by, by people over thousands of years. So, and we are such a diverse country, you know, in every uh, kilometer's language changes. Similarly, the books, your sources change. So we have a very... Uh, uh, it's been a great learning for me. I've been doing this since 2010 now, so it's been 14 years that I've been uh, living this journey of reading Indian history, I call it. I don't call it mythology. I believe that uh, there is so much to learn when you read, when you try and understand that too through different versions written all across the country. We are talking about a book that is there, but these are legendary stories which are there in our culture and our history. We don't celebrate Diwali thinking it's a myth. So there is a huge amount of uh, respect that I have when I'm telling the Mahabharat story or yeah, now please. the Ramayana story. It's taken more than two, three years of just research on how do I tell it to a modern audience today, keeping the same sensibilities because we are talking to the masses of our country. You know, when you're telling a story from a book to screen adaptation, what matters is how, who are you talking to through that book? If it's a Shiva trilogy, it has to talk to the masses, you know, because for them, he's God. Uh, when you come on screen with a book, Trial by Fire, it's a very different uh, narrative. It will go on to a different kind of an audience. So I think that with the technological change of these web series coming in and uh, films, I, I believe that our country has such great stories, you know, written by people over thousands of years, 
not many people know it i had no idea myself uh, as i started to read you know I, i'm still reading every day so for me it is you know understanding how to tell stories understanding how to tell characters understanding how are they relevant today because you are wanting to transport the viewer into a different world altogether so to do that you have to first understand what are you trying to say through it so the process starts with a lot of research uh two three different researchers across the country research on all the texts the most uh, we have a head researcher who's possibly from head of the department of sanskrit from mumbai university and different phd's in the field of <clears throat> who have spent their lifetime reading this because it's impossible for me to read in the yeah. last 14 years and say i know the mahabharat it's like you know there is much more to it than what i can imagine so so it's very important to get the right teams of people if you want to tell any kind of adaptation and how you adapt it to screen is also very different because when it's written on paper to when it's coming on screen there are two different uh, approaches what a story a very well written story does is it gives you a very strong base you know uh, you know the, the core emotion what you need to do is interpret it so a lot of time goes into this then you have to create each and every world it's not it's not something that we can just uh, create we could do a lot of research on how the structures were how they looked at that point in time accordingly we start building these sets the format of telling you know with such a ramayana or a mahabharat type of a narrative you know for me on television is a is a limited series format so both the shows whether it's mahabharat and now with ramayana i have not been telling them like a never ending format because there's so much of vastness in the story to concise it into one film or concise it into just eight ten episodes i don't not very sure whether it does justice to it and on the transmedia thing like you were saying i believe that uh, you know once we have a a series and and we tell a story of such magnitude on screen on whichever screen we take as the primary medium for it depends on who we are talking to again you know accordingly we have you know there are so many subsets of the story so if i'm telling the the ramayan story you know but not many people know the ravan story not many people know the kekai story so the subsets of the larger story can be exploited across different mediums similarly with other additional mediums of gaming coming in or music coming in or different aspects coming in i believe that all of this uh, Uh, ensures that the storyteller because at the end of it uh, we are not here to to great to do great visual effects i'm here to tell a great story that is the core purpose of everything that we do here right we are here to tell stories apart from anything else anybody is here for i don't know <laughs> you know for me i think all of us who love this industry who love to tell stories are are wanting to come together and and figure out the best way to to tell it in a way that the world takes knowledge of it so for me uh i think it's great time for all of us who believe uh in telling such stories about our country in a way that the world notices stories that are very local but they are told in a very global way so for me all the lines are blurring they've already blurred in a way but what matters is if we are adapting it to an animation for example you know how do you adapt the same story into an animation because your audience who you're talking to automatically changes so your writing will change yeah. your core will remain the same but the writing approach will change because now you are talking to a child so so how do you tell the krishna story as a child vis a vis when you're telling it on screen when you're talking to the whole family so these are things i believe but uh, uh, great stories are written by people who spend years writing them they don't write against a 3 month deadline or a 6 month development you know great stories are written by a lot of conviction which writers like him and many more successful writers as well as mr vyas vyas and many more in our uh, history as i say have done great amount of uh, effort in telling these stories so we have to just understand them and interpret them in a way that it it's relevant to our generations that are coming that is also something that i personally feel yeah exactly that i feel that you know we need to know who we are and you know that's a personal nothing to do with anything it's just a personal thing that you know we somewhere need to know who we are the way we are and why are we are the way we are you know in a way so yeah but i personally believe that there is a lot of great stories which are already there we with the technological advancement mediums coming in 
it's a great time to create a synergy across mediums where you create your own uh, Bharatverse, as I am calling it, you know, which is your own world. And you tell stories because uh, I'm still reading, so it's endless. There, are, There's so much to learn, there is so much to create, there's so much to uh, do in this space, yeah. That's true. Uh, do we have uh, time for questions, audience questions? Should we, is that okay, Hema? We are not doing any Q&A? Okay. So I have a question for you, Abhishek. You know, I mean, after Kaipoche, I'm sure you've been looking for source material in books all the time. And you haven't, I'm assuming you haven't found something exciting over the years. No, I did. Uh, you did? I, actually, I did. I did a film called uh, Fitur. Oh, which yes. Which was an adaptation of uh, Dickens' Great Expectations. Hmm. But you haven't found anything in India over the years. So my question was really, do you think what's ailing the Indian publishing? in terms of, you know, not attracting enough attention from filmmakers? I think it's uh, encouragement. I'm uh, of the strong belief, just the way the business is structured is not uh, conducive for talent to flourish. It's a, a very, uh, with due respect, uh, you know, to uh, all our big uh, stars and all of that, but the business cannot just be standing on the basis of the actors, you know, and due to that, unless you don't get a big actor, you can't get a film off the floor. You yeah. know, it's very difficult to make a movie with newcomers and all of that. And if that is going to be the ultimate climb, then if, because all your energy is going towards servicing that requirement. And uh, if everything else is not going to be given the due respect and uh, uh, weight, like, uh, oh, I'm sorry, who's written uh, Harry Potter? Uh, J.K. Rowling. J.K. Lawrence. I think she must be somebody in the West. If she writes a book, it's going to get made. You know, in respect. And they will find the right person to cast for it. They won't be running around to find the top five actors that are there. And if they don't are not available, then you can't make this film because the cost of that product will be justified only by that, those particular actors. So if you, that's coming back to what I said earlier, if you want to flourish, we need to restructure our thoughts and start giving weight to real writers, to content, and to uh, legit filmmakers and storytellers. You know, and I think we have a lot of them, but they're just ignored and they, uh, because they, are, they know their craft, they know what they're doing. Sometimes uh, a filmmaker might fail, but an actor, when a filmmaker fails here, one movie and he's brushed aside. But actors are given multiple chances as if they are the only ones who make the films run, which is unfair. You know, uh, uh, the, the films, like they say, you know, a theater is an actor's medium, television is a writer's medium, and film is a director's medium. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to give everybody uh, enough uh, uh, encouragement and support and uh, a little bit more risk taking is needed if you really want to survive uh, and dominate with our stories and the only way to do it is to scale up to make them bigger and richer and uh, purer you know uh, yeah yeah uh, you know there's also this this trend i've seen in the last 4 5 years where a lot of uh, newer contemporary authors are greatly influenced and obviously they all want to see their books on screen. They've started writing their books as kind of screenplays, semi-screenplays. So Amish, what's your comment on that? I mean, is because you know, I feel it's kind of not the organic way to write a book if you're thinking you're writing a screenplay as an author, but any views? Yeah, you're, you're right. One has seen that and frankly, that's a little unfortunate. See, I'll tell you what. that. Uh, there's no medium that is better or worse, but every medium uh, that you create in has some strengths, has some challenges, right? Uh, the beauty of, uh, of, of creating a story in a book as compared to a movie uh, is that you can give free reign to your imagination, right? Uh, when a director is making a movie, he's restricted by the budget, he's restricted by things that are practical, you know, whereas if you're an author, you can give your imagination free reign. I mean, I, I could think of a liger in, in Secret of the Nagas, which is essentially a lion and a tigress, the, 
the, the, the child of a lion and a tigress. This used to be there till a few centuries ago, now they don't exist. Now it's an impractical thing for a filmmaker to do, but in a book, I can just write it, right? The benefit of a book also is that actually uh, in a movie, the viewer is seeing only the director's imagination. In a book, the author actually sets up the scene, yeah. but every reader fills up the colors with his or her own imagination. And as an author, you kind of bear that in mind when you create it. So that actually gives you a lot more freedom. And if you give that up because you're trying to kind of uh, create something which a filmmaker will pick up, then you're losing the beauty of this medium. You shouldn't do that, yeah. you know. Do what you are meant to do, do it well, and then when it has to be picked up, if it has to be picked up for a movie, a director, and a director will adapt. He, the director has to adapt it in any case. He cannot do a page-to-page -page conversion of a book into a movie. It's never going to happen yeah, exactly. that way. So be true to your medium. Right, absolutely. Three and a half minutes left. Quickly, Sid, I'm going to ask you something. What do you look for in a book? Like, tell me the three things that you think, like when you look at book or any source material, you know, as a creator, what are the essential things that you think a book should have for screen? Um, you know, for me, when I'm reading any of these stories, I try to first understand what are they trying to say through it. Yeah. Yeah. In a line, if you're able to tell me what this story is all about, I think that is the most important thing because that shows a lot of clarity and once we have that, you'll be able to write it you know, with a very clear lens in as to how you are narrating the story because you know exactly that what you're saying. So for me, um, I always like to first understand in a nutshell as to if I am telling the story of Rama and then I'm telling, what am I telling through it, you know? So because it, it's such a vast story, it can be looked at from any lens. You can pick up the story from anywhere, you know? And why would a today's audience who's watching you today and more than that to you as an individual because I'm a firm believer in, in telling the stories that you believe in and not trying to second guess anybody who is watching your story because like he said, they can read or watch and interpret it whichever way they want. So second guessing a viewer or of any nature is not really the ideal way of working according to me and I've learned it in my journey also. So I believe that uh, once we understand the core messaging that we are trying to say, so if I'm telling the Ramayana story, it's very important that where do I start it from? You know, how do you, how do you begin the Ramayana story in today's day and age where you want the viewers with the very little patience that they have, there is a huge amount of shift that's happened in our own family relationships since the last 40 years. But how do you keep the essence and the core Indian cultural values the same and yet make it in a way that it's modern enough and not a creative liberty uh, because I feel so. You know, because there are emotions attached. There are people who believe in uh, things and our purpose should be to glorify our nation. So for me, it was important that we'll pick up an aspect that how was Dashrath named, uh, named Dashrath. You know, because there is so much more in these texts. It's not like it's an A, B, C, D. You have to read, understand, pick up, and pick up a point from where you want to tell the story. But very clearly, it was a father-son story. Right. So once you're clear on the, on the narrative structure, those things are very important. Right. And also, I think choice of dialogues, as you've seen in Adi Purush, <laughs> can go completely wrong. Yeah, it is. Uh, Saurabh, you've got a minute. Just uh, from a business point of view, why don't you summarize what do you think is the trend for the year? Uh, in terms of studios looking for material, filmmakers looking for material, like what genres, what kind of stories, whether in the form of books or not, can be, uh, can be exciting for the year? So whatever you have in your kitty, they are not looking for that. But how do we know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just a joke. Uh, so basically, uh, like I said, uh, I think one of the most important thing in any content is the characters like he would be reading it. But when you fall in love with the characters, no matter what the world is, and there's always a debate when I uh, speak to people and they say, oh, this is comedy, hai. comedy action ke chal jayega, same day release. Ho jayega. But you know, people are not going to the cinema hall because of a genre. They are going to a cinema hall because of this thing. Like, you know, uh, you can have an Andrew Garfield and a Spider-Man and yet it can work because the character is so lovable and relatable. So, 
uh, whether it's book or any other format. But what what book does is that it translates, uh, it does the homework for a for somebody to see that world and maybe enhance it or better it or tweak it, yeah. whatever way you want to say it. So I think we are all looking for characters. characters. The world is looking for characters. And uh, don't I, when I say character, it doesn't mean in any wrong way. But if you have a relatable person, hero, heroine, uh, a good solid protagonist that you feel tell the story of, right? Yes. Yeah. Sid, you want to add something? No, just adding to what you're saying, you know, because the most important thing, like I believe, is the is is the story. Hmm. You know, we are storytellers. We are telling this story. So what we do is, from the book, we read the story. We try to understand the story and and think it through on all fronts. Try to own it in a way, and decide how do we tell it on screen. Yeah. Because there is a great journey from what the writer is trying to say, and again, how you interpret it. You know, when you read a book, you yeah. know, it could be you, your take could be very different than the author's take. Similarly, imagine texts which are like of any nature. So I feel that it's very important that, you know, the core purpose of all of this that we're doing is to get tell a great story and someone needs to completely believe in it. I think that is uh, the belief that, belief you know, whether you go right or wrong is an outcome 50% we are anyways right. Correct. So, so I just wrap I this up. We are out of time. Thank you so much. But this weekend, we had the best transmedia example. There was a big story on the news many years ago, then became a book. And this weekend, it was a documentary, the Indrani Mukherjee story. <laughs> Character and story, and she believes the story. Anyway, I don't think we have time for questions, I'm sorry, but we can take it off stage. Okay?